Welcome, welcome. Garden tour number three underway. Here we go. I'm gonna pan over the big garden here. As you can see, things are growing very well. Here we're harvesting garlic, getting this bed ready for the broccoli and cauliflower to go in next week. You start wanting to harvest uh, the garlic when the plants are starting to die back. So these will go on a rack to start drying until they fully die and then we cut off the tops and put them into the basement. So lots and lots of garlic, still lots more to come out. This is what we pulled out in front of the green beans, the pole beans, which was perfect timing as those are starting to come in and we're harvesting. And there's our little mushrooms that keep popping out of the soil. That's been ever since the uh, pine needles went in. We'll go on this side. So you can see the garlic is gone. I just pulled that out today. Our mullein plant, or mullein plant. We've been harvesting the flowers to make uh, ear medication or for ear infections is what it's for. And you can see our green beans are finding their way to the top. The ones that are along the posts already found the top. And that is to the top. So here we got cucumbers growing up well on the panel. And there's a zinnia. There's a marigold that's taking over. Cucumber is doing good. The zinnia back there just starting to flower. The cucumber finding the cattle panel. There is celery. Growing well. We got cabbage heads forming and we still have a ton of cabbage worms. One thing I do need to get in order to handle those better in the future, uh, we've never actually had problems with those, is BT, which is a, I believe a fungus, possibly a bacteria, but it's a natural, um, a natural insecticide you can give plants to prevent those from being chewed on and basically the insect will die once it chews on it as the BT will be in the plant. Same thing goes with uh, vine borers. If you've got um, any of your vining crops being bored into, which I've got going on in some of the beds. So then there's the rest of the garlic. You can see where the shovel ended. It's about half of that row yet to go. Zinni on the end there. And these tomatoes, 4th of July tomatoes not looking good they're gonna get ripped out after they're harvested there's an opal basil or purple basil but that's about all we're gonna get for tomatoes on those and the ones up here look really good and here are green stripe roma tomatoes seed heads onion seed heads those are onions we would have forgotten last year we let them go to seed and we save the seed on them to plant next year In their indeterminate varieties. I think I pulled one so far off of this plant right here. You can see. Let me try to. And honestly, I don't remember the varieties. I know I've got some black creme in here because it's my favorite. But lots of tomatoes starting to form. We have got a ton of fruit set. Way more flowers and should have way more fruit set. But we do have a lot of baby fruit starting to form, which is extremely exciting. And we've been picking peppers. Here are the pepper plants. Here's that elephant ear getting big. Little zinnia in there. We got a pepper plant right there. But yes, we've been pulling peppers. Eating them up. This is the best the peppers have looked in five or six years, kid you not. 
Another marigold. And there are the blue potatoes or purple potatoes. They're still looking good. The ones in the raised beds are slowly starting to die back. Not even slowly, quickly dying back, I should say. And then here is winter squash. And you can see the whole bed is pretty much covered in vines. And then we've got uh, broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage in here too that is also being eaten. Here's a real pretty zinnia, looking really good. And squash. Another squash hiding. There's a cabbage head with a bee on them. Interesting. And then here is uh, one of our popcorn beds. So you can see there's only three rows doing good and then there's this fourth row that's like a half a row. We finally got some fertilizer on there and some weeding and whatnot. Everything is growing really good again. But you can see it's not the greatest for being end of July. And our pumpkin patch is doing good. Greening up finally and starting to take over some ground. And our potatoes. We've been in a drought for quite a while. We got maybe two inches of rain two weeks ago, but it's been in the 90s with 90% humidity and we could use a good soaking. We have watered three times, but uh, when we water, it's not as deep of a soaking because we're watering with a pump and a hose out of the pond. So it already takes five, six hours to give everything a drink and to give it a deep soak would take a whole entire day. We don't have the time or the setup. But that's the one cool thing is we kind of built this with that in mind. So all these wood chip rows you see right here They've got actually huge chunks of wood and then smaller chunks of wood and then wood chips on top and that's acting as like a, a water bank or a water sponge to soak up extra water and hold it there for the plants. It's also providing food for the microbes and the fungi and helping breaking down the soil and providing that good quality soil that we're looking for. Here's our raspberry patch growing up and looking the best it's ha it has since we've moved in here. And then here is the glass gem corn. This corn's doing the best out of all of it. Uh, it's chest high and thick. And not a very big patch, but I look forward to getting the corn off there. So the strawberries finally ended and we cut them back real hard. And we've got some uh, Brussels sprouts there. I'm not sure if they're really gonna do anything. They've been in the ground for a while, but got shaded out and stunted. Some more of the onion tops or onion heads right here now. So you can see that there's no more white flowers. That is a seed head that's ready to be harvested for the seed. Big zucchini. We've been pulling lots of zucchini. There you can see a zucchini is ready. Sunflower's doing good. We got beets in this row. Pretty soon more peas and carrots and all that stuff is going in. We also got kohlrabi here, which it's been too hot for it to grow. And then you can see we've got carrots, which are also probably wanting some water. So now let's pan the uh, raised bed garden, which is absolutely stunning and way so more early in the morning as all the flowers are out and really noticeable. So you can see we've got trellises and cages filling up, beds disappearing. This, this plot is still doing by far better than the other plot and a whole lot less blight and issues other than we still have high insect pressure. So here we've got tomatoes. Lots and lots of them. still flowering strong 
Here you can see our jalapeno peppers. I never thinned them out. I'm just gonna leave them and let them go, but they're starting to green up and grow really well. Along with some carrots, marigold, and some onions. And here is one cucumber patch. Our biggest patch actually by far. Growing really well, but we haven't gotten a lot of cucumbers off of it. Disappointing. Armenian cucumbers are a Japanese variety. Uh, growing up decently, still no cukes. Lots of flowers though, as you can see. And we got another mullein flowering out. Way cool, way cool. Here's our squirrel trellis cucumbers. I can't exactly remember the variety, but this is a yellow variety of cucumber. It is growing really good and we've gotten some off of there and you can see we've got plenty more that will be coming. Lots of cucumbers. So back here we had the onions die back and some were starting to rot off so yesterday I cleared over half the beds I just left two of them over there just because they haven't fully died back. Here are the potatoes I was talking about that are starting to die back. These will probably be dug out in about a month. And then the potatoes over there got in a little later and they're looking really good yet. So here's the zucchini. Hey Nala. Hey pretty girl. You can see we got a zucchini on there. Hey, Spooky. Here we've got a watermelon. I'm not seeing any babies on this one, but there are some baby watermelon. This is probably a baby cantaloupe. Almost 100% sure on that. We've got cantaloupe here. Look at this pepper. Now there's four pepper plants in here, so that's why it looks so big and dense. And definitely could have been thin. But that's almost chest high as well, so that's really cool. Green stripe Roma tomatoes. Oops, let me get out of the sunlight. They're hard to see because they blend in with the plants, but there is a lot of them. A lot of them on here. Lots of Romas. Those are my favorite because they're meatier. I don't really like all the gooey seeds. Another watermelon. Here we got uh, spaghetti squash. At least I think... Actually, not spaghetti squash. That would... That would be the um, butternut squash, and it looks like it possibly crossed with the uh, spaghetti style. Here's a cantaloupe that's probably dying of vine borer. Here you can see the vines are all messed up. That's a pretty good indication. These are our green bean beds. So you can see those leaves, all that speckling, that is a sure sign of spider mites. Uh, there's a lot of spider mites this year I've noticed. I don't know if it's the high heat and humidity that's got them. I don't know if it's the high heat or humidity that's got them crazy, but there's a lot of spider mites. I'm not doing anything to treat them. Mother nature can run its course. There's good bugs that will take care of those and we'll hope that they uh, reproduce and take care of them for us but those are going to basically be ripped out soon enough to be replaced with some more beans for a later harvest here we got kakuzi squash little baby kakuzi little bigger kakuzi now those are supposed to be like zucchini basically but they store like a winter squash so that's pretty neat. Here's a little baby spaghetti squash. And all of our spaghetti squash, we've got a lot of them on. There's another one. There's another one. And you can see the... Can you see? 
the big one in there. So I think I was up to over a dozen uh, spaghetti squash already. Lots of spaghetti squash. Another watermelon plant with a slightly bigger watermelon. Little baby. They're so cute. And another little baby. Here are Big Max pumpkins. They're just starting to green up. I don't know what was going on. We still have a lot of flowers, but not any of the Big Max pumpkins on. Another kakuzi. Squash is in here. And there's one. There's another one. So lots of them. Here's another tomato. This is a 4th of July tomato. This one looks a little light green, but is not succumbing to the blight like they are in the other ones. I'm sure it will over time. All right, and our artichokes. Globe artichokes, looking huge. Keeping my fingers crossed every day that we get some of those. That would be awesome. Something else I passed up and forgot to show you that I just saw. We've got ourselves a large uh, cantaloupe and some little critter taking his portions, I guess, but not doing any harm. So we'll leave it alone and leave that little bugger alone unless one of the dogs get him. Some more of the green striped Roma tomatoes. So that's it for that garden and I will run you up to the hoop house quick. Nala, what are you finding? Oh man, her favorite. Hunting them big frogs. I'm not gonna go in there and show you everything, but it's pretty well cleaned up now. And you can see a whole lot better of what's going on. <coughs> All right, so those are the soybeans. We actually do have soybeans forming quite a few pods pretty excited about that this is definitely seen the least amount of attention here's another three rows of popcorn all growing really well those also got top dressed with some fertilizer these are supposed to be sunflowers they're for whatever reason only a foot tall here I nothing popped up and I was planning on uh, transplanting my amaranth but as you can see, my amaranth all went to seed on me and is starting to flower out. So how disappointing. That stuff is supposed to be five, six feet tall. I don't know if the heat did it or what, but we're not going to get too many seed heads off of those little, bit, little bitty heads. So if you've grown amaranth before, send me a message, drop a comment, something. So can I pinch those off? Do I start over? I'm not sure. And you can see these two rows of amaranth haven't grown much at all. So the red amaranth, not doing this so good. Not really liking the conditions. Sunflower is doing better. And then the last patch, there's about 10 rows of popcorn here. Still heavily weeded. Uh, we did weed right around the popcorn, but we left the rows with weeds to help hold the moisture around. So sorry it's hard to see. But there's the popcorn. There, that's a little easier if I go row by row. That row is doing the worst and is the smallest. Nervous about that stuff getting to be big enough. There's the first, some of the only corn that made it on the first planting, obviously being the tallest. Here's a row doing really well, and another row doing decent. And then sunflowers and the uh, milkweed mixed in there. So there's the tour guys. I hope you're all enjoying your summer. I hope you guys have beautiful gardens. I hope you all got some rain. That's something we haven't gotten here. 
and I know with the high heat we all need some rain so take care thanks for watching always appreciate it till next time peace